The British knew that agricultural production could not be increased with one or two horsepower methods. An entirely new concept was needed. Concepts are created by men, and the man who was to provide the right concept was across the sea in Detroit, Michigan. His name was already known everywhere, Henry Ford. In 1917, the Ford Automotive Plant, the largest in the world, was producing cars at the rate of more than 300,000 a year. Even though Ford's primary interest was in transportation, he had been a farm boy, and he had always dreamed of making farm work easier and more productive with mechanization. For more than 10 years, he had been experimenting with gasoline tractors. Was it possible to design a machine that could be manufactured in quantity to sell at a low price, yet provide ruggedly reliable farm service? By 1917, after years of intensive work, a model had been developed that seemed to provide the answer. With his son, Edsel, Ford had incorporated company to build the new machine. The firm was Henry Ford and Son. The tractor was to be known as the Fordson. It started on gasoline, ran on kerosene, and developed 20 horsepower. More than 50 experimental Fordsons were built, and two were tested in Britain. The British saw them as the first simple, reliable, inexpensive tractors, tractors that anyone could operate. Since they planned to put demobilized soldiers and housewives to work in the fields, this was important. Lord Northcliffe, representing the British government, came to Dearborn to discuss the manufacture of the Fordson in England under close Ford supervision. If there were to be enough of these machines to solve Britain's food problem, it would be necessary to produce them in quantity. Without hesitation, Ford switched back to the alternative of building Fordsons in Dearborn. They worked night and day in a new and unexplored field, an operation that was a lot different from the manufacture of cars. But in spite of all problems, on October 8, 1917, the initial units were completed. They were the world's first mass-produced tractors. Production was slower in the beginning, but through the winter, the pace accelerated. The last of an order of 7,000 machines was delivered to beleaguered Britain in April 1918. Later, a British government spokesman stated, without these machines, the food crisis in all probability would not have been surmounted. As the machines continued to roll off the assembly line, Henry Ford knew he had fired the opening gun in a wider war. A war that would go on long after the European conflict had passed into history. Ford called it power farming. He said, power farming is simply taking the burden from flesh and blood and putting it on steel and motors. This was the beginning of a new age. After Britain's tractors were delivered, mass production made the Fordson available at low cost to American farmers. They took to it on sight. Down the years, the manufacture of this revolutionary tool continued in high gear. And by 1925, no less than 500,000 had been built. In 